Hi everybody, it's John Wecroft here with another Sunday Q&A. We're up to week number 41 and I hope that you're keeping safe. It's looking like there's some signs of uh, an end to lockdown. So uh, I'm feeling quite positive. I hope you're feeling the same. Uh, some gigs have actually come into the diary, which is, uh, it's nice. It makes a nice change as opposed to them being cancelled as they have been for the last year. So I hope you keep them well and I hope you're staying inspired. I've got some great questions this week. It's going to be short and sweet, I'm afraid. Busy, busy as usual. Uh, I'm going to start with a tune. I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to play one of my own pieces. This is a tune called Circles, which is originally intended to be an ensemble piece. It's meant to be played with a full band. And when I recorded this, I recorded it with a band. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to attempt a solo rendition. So I'm going to start out free time, just with the melody. Then I'm going to harmonize the melody and play an improvisation based around the, uh, the solo changes and just basically see where it goes. So I uh, hope you enjoy this indulgence, hope you enjoy the tune and I'll see you on the other side with the questions. I had a great question from Archie asking about how to make the altered scale sound less mechanical. How do you make uh, lines from the altered scale that don't just sound like going up and down the scale? Um, and of course, there's many ways to do this. 
but I want to just take the opportunity to uh, to show you one of my favorite licks as well come from the altered scale and hopefully along the way I might be able to give you some ideas as to how you might be able to take scales and make them sound less kind of formulaic less kind of dry and academic and one of the things that you can do is you can find the other more shall we say expressive ideas that are buried within the scale so the altered scale in this case I'm going to play over an E7 with a raised 9 or maybe any of these kind of voices or a flat 9 or a raised 5 or a flat 5 so basically it means we have the root we have the major 3rd we have the flat 7 and then pretty much anything else we want in terms of either a flat 9 or a raised 9 or both even in fact or a flat 5 or a raised 5 and the idea is, is that these notes attach themselves to destination points in the chord which A E7 is resolving towards. So E7 would resolve towards maybe A minor, or E7 might resolve towards A major, or whatever you want it to be. It can go in any direction. It'll go to an e, even to another seven, to an A7. So what happens is these notes that we have here, these say a flat nine, they pull in a certain direction. Raise nine might go up to the, or the flat uh, five, might go down, or might go up. So what's happening here is these kind of additional tension notes, if if you will. Um, they resolve in an interesting way when the chord goes to its final destination point, or at least its temporary destination point. It could then move on to somewhere else. So in this instance, the ideas that I'm going to play for you are going to come from E altered, which is the F melodic minor scale. So here's where it's helpful that you know what type of harmony is found within a scale. So a very simple thing that you can do to begin with is to break the scale up firstly into the triads. So if I play this from F for the moment, you find an F minor triad, you'll find a G minor triad, you find an A flat augmented. Okay, now remember these two, these are gonna be important. So you're gonna find a B flat, major and a C major. A couple of weeks ago we were talking about triad pairs. So that's a triad pair, B flat major and C major. In fact, so is F minor and G minor as well, whilst we're at it. So. Okay. And then we have a pair of diminished triads, arguably, and there again, we have another triad pair. Less commonly used, I guess, just because the fact that diminished is maybe just a less frequently exploited sound, but there's no reason why you couldn't use that as well. Okay, so let's recap. We've got F minor, G minor, our first triad pair, A flat augmented, then we have a B flat major, C major, D diminished, then E diminished, and then we're back to F minor. So, okay. so, what can we do with those sounds? Well, one of the things that I like to do is to use the B flat and the C major sounds. In fact, I think I got it from Borelli Legrand, a lick where he goes, and he might go. It's also in a tune like Skunk Funk by the Brecker Brothers. Let him do that kind of thing. So then, that led me to think, well, if I can go for my E7 altered sound, instead of going something really obvious like... Which feels like a scale, I could go... Alla Borelli. Well then, could I also then take those arpeggios that go with... And create an arpeggio-like phrase. Those kind of ideas. So something like this. We play 
bit of free really slow. So we've got a C major arpeggio, and what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding a note above the fifth, so I'm going a C major, which I think is something I got from Borelli as well, where you play that arpeggio, you can play the semitone above, which is in the scale, so G to A flat, and then straight down a C major. And that by itself is a cool thing. And the fingering, sort of Django endorsed arpeggio fingering, which mixes a little bit of the bottom of the E form with the C form. So we've got. And then the same thing now from B flat, although in this instance, rather than using the scale tone above, which will give me, I use the scale tone below. Joe Paslik off the Virtuoso album. Combine the two things together and then that could result into an A minor or what have you. So let me play that for you super slow. So we've got G, A flat, then down our C triad. And then pick it up from the raise four of B flat. And then it comes down to B flat. So those B flat and C triads can be really exploited. So there's all these kind of ideas. Or, so like I to use. So it's B flat, his C. So B flat, open voice in, open voice in C. Then I can do the same thing, B flat, C. kind of uh, intervallic or the one I think we did this with the triad pair ideas okay now what's interesting about these two arpeggios is if we then go back to our initial let's find out what's in F melodic mine and see if we can exploit this if we then make these into seventh arpeggios rather than just triadic ideas we end up with the following you get F minor major seven G minor seven a flat major seven sharp five, which is a nice one. B flat seven and C seven. That's an interesting connection. So you've got two dominant sevens. And then we've also got two half diminished as well. So if you go from the D, we've got D half diminished. And you've got E half diminished. Okay. Now an interesting thing, in fact that's a big one in Gypsy Jazz, that. Playing the D half diminished against E7. In fact, we can reinterpret this because the D minus 7 flat 5, it's interesting how these things all kind of start to interrelate. If you remember a few weeks ago, we were looking at Pat Martino's system of minorizing and saying when he sees that chord, he doesn't really see it like this, he sees it like an F minor. Like an F minor six. With the sixth in the bass, that's the way that he conceptualizes that, he sees it that way. Well, in this case, that's like playing F minor six over E7, and of course F minus 6 will work, because F minus 6 comes from F melodic minor scale, and that's where all these kind of... Those kind of phrases come from. Again, Ala Borelli and Gypsy Jazz guys, modern Gypsy Jazz guys use that a lot. So you have an interesting situation, say with a tune like Minor Swing, for example, where you could play minus 6 arpeggios for every chord. So over A minor, it's clear it's going to be A minor 6. For D minor, it's going to be D minor 6. And 
then for E7, it's going to be F minor 6. Back to A minor. Like so. So you can play minor 6 ideas for all the chords. In fact, there's another sneaky one you can get in there if you like. Because when we go from A minor 6 to D minor 6, beforehand we can actually go A minor 6, A7 altered. And over that you play B flat minor 6. Same reason as you can play F against E, you can play B flat against A. So you can have a situation where whatever you play on the first chord, against the, the A7 altered. So you can have A minor, then A altered, then to D minor, back to A minor. Those kind of ideas. So to recap, what we're suggesting is by finding out what the seventh chords are and what the triads are, it gives us some options of things that we can use. So our lick there was C with that flat six and then B flat with the raised four. So or vice versa, we can do F minus six at least. This is D half diminished, it's the same thing. Let's use this topic as a good excuse to learn our half diminished arpeggios then. They're really, really useful. They can be used in many different ways. So here's three really good ways then. Our D minus seven flat five can of course be seen as a D minus seven with a flat five. It can also be seen as an F minus six with the F in the bass. It could be, as we saw a second ago, E altered. Or it could be a B flat 9. So just as a start there, there's three really useful applications for that sound. You've got a minus 6 sound. F minus 6. You've got B flat 7. With an added ninth, or you've got this E uh, altered sound. So specifically, what we've got. Let's see what intervals we have there. Against an E, we've got the flat seven. With the flat nine, you've got the major third, and you've got the raised five. So that's what you're getting here. You're getting raised five flat nine sound. Specifically, that's what we get when we play that. cool sound yeah. Okay, so we do this in D. So these are all going to be D minus 7 flat 5 arpeggios. So first off, let's map out the five octave shapes. Is the lowest one, the D. The next one along is here. The next one. So we'll give you the fret numbers. I'm not really good with fret numbers to be honest. I see it more as intervals, kind of in orbit around a movable root note. But uh, Fret numbers are maybe a useful way of me getting this information across. So open string and then B string at the third fret, that's the lowest octave. The next one is A string at the fifth, B string at the third. Then we have A at the five, G at the seven. Then we have E at the 10, G at seven, E at 10. The double octave. Okay, then we have a double octave again, 10, D string 12, high E string 10 and one more time we have uh, this an octave higher okay so what we need to fill this with is a root a minor third a flat five a flat seven and an octave now there's some choices available with where you place the notes. So I'm going to give you some of the most popular choices. So we start with the E form. So uh, chord because usually E form bar shapes are played in this location. So we've got 10, 
13, although that could be there as well, could be the 8th fret. So we have root minor 3rd, flat 5 at the 11th fret, flat 7 at the 10th octave, minor 3rd, flat 5th, flat 7, octave, minor 3rd. Now, the note which is most movable here is this flat 5. Do we play it here or do we play it here? Now, or, it's completely your call. I reserve the right to change midstream. This is one of the beauties of knowing the intervals is you can even play it here in one phrase and then here in another, you know. Or even both in the same lick. Um, th the reason why that's maybe a useful choice is if we make this into more of a pentatonic and we only have to add one note to do that, if we add the perfect fourth, we get... That kind of sound. It makes sense because it maintains this two note. Let's continue our journey along the fretboard and map out the other shapes. Then the next one is around these three octave root notes. And our shape could be as follows. So I'll give you the intervals. So that's root. On the next string, you've got minor third and flat five. On the next string, just the flat seven. Then the root, minor third, flat five, flat seven, and then octave. In fact, you could go. Okay, all well, fret numbers if you want. 10, 8, 11, 10, 7, 10, 9, 8, 10. I'm really terrible with the fret numbers, but I see it as intervals. Yeah, okay. It's a good one. Again, over these. So you can use that against uh, our E7 altered. Okay, let's go one position down again. So this is more like the A form. There's a sneaky little chord shape that you can play here. There's an aside here. That's this is a, a bar that's hinged on an angle. So a lot of players play these four or these four, but not all five together. So the bar is a two different frets. So the bottom of the finger is playing the fourth fret, and the tip of the finger is playing with the fifth fret. It's a cool little effect if you if you want to get those type of chords. Yeah. Okay, the arpeggio, again, root, minor third, flat five, seven, octave. Similar to the shape that's on the top of that pattern. So root, minor third, flat five, flat seven, root, minor third, flat five, flat seven. And anything I do on that string can obviously be done on that string because they're the same notes. Okay, numbers five, eight, six, Five, seven, six, four, eight. Okay, moving swiftly on. The next one, this beautiful chord. With the flat five in the bass. It's one of my favorite fingerings for a half diminished chord. Okay. Uh, and the pattern from octave to octave is root, minor third, flat five, flat seven, root. Or fret, five. Three, six, five, three. Now I'll map that out with uh, the notes on either side. That's fifth fret, third fret, fourth fret. There we go. And the final one, open string idea, but we can obviously move up to the twelfth fret. We've got root, minor third, flat five, flat seven, octave. with our exploration of pentatonic scale uh, a few weeks ago the same patterns just keep mapping and keep getting dragged and dropped around the fretboard so we have a little 
cell shape and then a little which is reminiscent of this that kind of idea so I'll give you the fingers from the lowest notes first fret fourth fret third open open to third first first third first fourth and of course that can be played here and all of these can be played against e7 also b flat seven with an added ninth f minus six you know and of course it has a d half diminished and that's only scratching the surface there are other applications for these arpeggios but they're really good ones they're really strong so yeah, don't underestimate the power of the half diminished. It's a, such a great sound uh, and it's used a lot in modern jazz, but very often juxtaposed against other chords. It's also used a lot in gypsy jazz as well. So if you're looking for that, you know, Borelli sound, then often one of the ways that he does it is by juxtaposing a minus six or, or a minus seven flat five seen from a, a different position against all of these different harmonic events. I had a question from Alex, or more specific request really asking about uh, any tips for what you might play when you're dealing with a one chord static vamp and very specifically uh, a particular groove from uh, Oz Noise version of the tune Sissy Strut where he's playing over an extended C7 backing vamp. So what I'm going to do because of course there's millions of different options available to you here and these are some of the things that we've looked at in the past but just for the purposes of keeping things concise and to the point I'm going to give you five tips or five specific things that you can do when dealing with a static vamp. Let's begin by just defining the regular scale options. So for C7 in this case, we play C mixolydian, which is... And you can also do that minor to major third from the blues so we just consider that as a given we've got C mixolydian and you can see blues an option really because I assume that that's something that hopefully you're okay with. Okay, so our first thing that we can do when we're playing against C mixolydian, we take this from C mixolydian, is we can highlight the arpeggios that come from various degrees. So let's just again to keep this simple, we'll do from the root, the major third, the perfect fifth and the flat seven. So the arpeggio from the root will be C7. degree we're back to our minus seven flat five again so this time it will be E minus seven flat five so you can put them to good use already We can superimpose, in this case, G minor. And that gives us the sound of the 5, the flat 7, the 9, and C minor 7, we get the 11. So, of course, if I play G minor 7, ideas that's this minorization thing or G uh, minor pentatonic so just G 
minor things. And then off the flat seven, I can play B flat major seven. of each of the degrees, still coming from Mixolydian, so just to recap I've got C7, E half diminished gives me C9, I've got G minus 7 gives me C11, B flat major 7 gives me, major, uh, gives me dominant 13. first thing can be superimposing arpeggios from various degrees of the chord, in this case specifically the root, third, fifth and flat seven. Our second thing is going to be find the gaps. So in Mixolydian there's a number of tone gaps. So we have one here between the root and the flat seven. We have one between the uh, 13 and the 5, or 6 and 5. Go on between the 5 and the 4. Between the 3 and the 2. And the 2 and the 1. chromatically by bridging those gaps. So that could be thing number two, is chromatically bridge the gaps. Thing number three, we can imagine a phantom five chord. So we're imagining this. I was imagining it's going from C, G7, diminished idea so for, for G7 I played F half diminished. Now here's a cool idea because you've got E half diminished for C then you just go Five. 
The fourth thing takes that theme of moving up or down by a semitone. We can take a phrase. Taking a phrase, and I might take a little bit of that phrase and move it up by, say, one fret. Maybe I'll take the first two notes, and then back again. is a bit of a bigger deal really. We're going to now move through very symmetrical options. I'm going to do this pretty quickly so at any point you might need to pause and maybe write out the options. So I can go Mixolydian. If I raise the 4, I'm in Lydian flat 7. I take that scale and I replace the natural five and six with a raised five, I get this. The whole tone scale. Sad, I grant you, but definitely usable. Go back to Lydian flat seven. Okay, now if I replace the natural second with a flat second and a raised second, I now have the half hole. So let me go through that one more time. So I'll display it as a scale now. Here's the C dominant scale. Raise the four. Lydian flat seven. Replace the five and the six with a raise five. Back to Lydian flat seven. Replace the, the two with a flat two. So the music of to thank you for getting this far in that's number 41 in the bag uh, i hope you found something at least one thing there that was uh, useful for you please keep the comments coming keep the uh, the really kind messages any shares and just tell your friends you know if you think anyone's going to enjoy this and they're going to get anything from it please let them know that this exists uh, i couldn't do it without you so any requests any questions you've got just or suggestions or just ideas for things that you think might be useful, informative or interesting. I'll certainly take a stab at it. I'll give it a, give it my best shot anyway. So hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying inspired. 
Let's hope there's a bit of uh, positive news along the way. It's beginning to get a bit sunnier. The days are getting longer. It's getting warmer. So uh, there's a renewed positivity in the air. So let's all do our bit, hey, and try and stay inspired and uh, keep playing music. It's a positive thing. And we'll get out of this uh, unscathed, hopefully. So take care of yourself, and I'll see you next week with number 42. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this, and thanks once again. Take it easy.